We're going to go game by game, matchup by matchup, and identify the sneaky starts for each game. This is going to help those fantasy managers who are struggling setting lineups. You're either in a deep league or you're killed by injuries and in bye weeks, and you got to start a third string wide receiver, and you got to figure out which guy that is. And I'm going to give you some suggestions. These are suggestions to get you by for the week. These aren't calls to hit. This video is a little bit different because we're trying to identify the matchups to see which matchup can help an ancillary jabroni do something on the field to be good enough to get us by in fantasy. If you're looking for must-starts, go back and look at the must-start video from yesterday, but this is more on a deeper level to help you find a diamond in the rough to help you get by into week 15. But before we do all this, make sure you tap that subscribe button. Tap it with the finger on the phone, click it with the mouse on the computer, whatever you gotta do to get the job done. We're going deep on the waiver wire every day. I'm also helping you set your lineups at the end of every week. I'm a big resource for your research when it comes time for your drafts. If you don't click that button, you're gonna miss out. But let's dig in. Let's start looking at these matchups here. We got the Rams at the Baltimore Ravens. We got a 40 over under. So we got a lower implied point total here and a 7.5 spread. So it's kind of thick there. That being said, Rashad Bateman's a sneaky play. A deep play here. He's seeing an increase in snaps. And we're coming off a of bye week. And he's been dealing or coming back from that Liz Frank surgery that he had earlier in the season. Started off a little iffy. And now when we go back and look at the tape, he's starting to get that pop back in the step. You're not trusting Ravens wide receivers, especially three down the line from Zay Flowers and Odell Beckham. And then you also got Nelson Aguilar there. And then likely he's also getting targets. But still, he's starting to get more opportunities here. He's running on 77.8% of the routes. So things are trending up. We're not expecting him to hit big. But if you're hurting and you need a wide receiver, this might be a guy to look at. If not, we can look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Atlanta Falcons. We got a 41 over under, so a lower implied point total, but it's pushing to moderate range there. 1.5 spread, so it's kind of tight. You can throw in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That being said, Kyle Pitts, because he's getting 55 air yards per game, second highest on the team. Teams like to throw it deep on Tampa Bay. They do not like to run it on them. I still look for Bijan to do some things, so don't get that twisted. But I look for the Atlanta Falcons. Well, I don't really look for it because Arthur Smith's there, but they really should look into what other teams have been doing and trying to push it downfield. And if they do, you might see some targets to Kyle Pitts. He's seeing five targets a game. If they're deeper targets, he might reel a couple in, and you might catch a splash week. Panthers at the Saints, 37 and a half over under. You see a trend here. We got lower implied point totals right now. Not looking good. That's what Vegas is saying. We got a spread here that's kind of thick here at five. I'm expecting Carolina to nosedive in this game, but we shall see. That being said, we got some jabronis who might be getting some opportunities with A.T. Perry and Lynn Bowden. Chris Olave is dealing with an illness. He might suit up, he might not, but as of Friday night, we don't know. Rashid Shahid is on the do not practice list, so we got to pay attention to him, but he is listed as questionable. Michael Thomas is on IR. So if worse comes to worse, both these wide receivers could be running routes on the field for quite a bit in this game, and they could be seeing some opportunities. And you know what? James Winston does not care. He will throw those YOLO balls and eat crab cakes. Detroit Lions at the Chicago Bears, 43.5 over under. So we're pushing to a moderate point total here, which I could see this being a decent game for fantasy because we do have some pieces here, not too many. But who's a sneaky play? Who's a guy that's on waivers or on the back end of somebody's roster that could hit? Jamison Williams. And all I have is a 17.4 ADOT in his last four games because he's a field stretcher. All he has to do is bring in a couple deep balls. And you know what? That could be a splash week or good enough to get you by. And look at his last four games here. 3.8 fantasy points in week 10, 12.4 in week 11, 7.1 in week 12, and 10 in week 13. So every other game, he's getting you by. That's good enough. If you're looking at the waiver wire and you're hurting, you can't count on it, but you got to take what you can get. Colts at the Bengals here, 44 over under. So around a moderate projected point total from Vegas. Tight spread here. This one could go off the rails or it could be nasty low scoring. 
We got to pay attention to that. That's why Vegas is kind of in the middle. That's kind of like how I read things here. But Josh Downs, he has been on the low lately. Four bad games in a row, but he's still seeing seven targets a game, 19.6% target share, and he gets the shorter targets, which could equate the volume in this matchup. And if that lends that way, and he gets some of the short targets, you know what? It could be another splash week for Josh Downs. It's not like he all of a sudden turned bad or anything. He's still a good wide receiver. He's still running a lot of routes. His opportunities are due to come. Jacksonville Jaguars at the Cleveland Browns here. 30 and a half over under. Vegas has it very low due to the nature of the quarterback position here. We do not know what's going on with Trevor Lawrence as the time we're filming this video. And the quarterback position with the Browns, we know it's not too good. We know the Browns defense is very tight. The Jaguars defense can get pretty stingy as well. That being said, Parker Washington. He's going to get those slot targets because he runs 80% of his snaps in the slot. Well, we know that from one game there, so a small sample. But still, this could lead to a progression funnel. He could get those Christian Kirk targets. That could lead to production, but we don't know yet. He's quite the unknown. He could be a good stash just in case that happens. And if it doesn't happen, you just drop him. But that's on you. You do what you want to do. But we can look at the Texans at the Jets here. 33 and a half over under. You see the trend with these over unders? They're low. They are low this week. They've been low a lot this season. A couple years ago, you'd notice they'd be a lot higher. You'd only get a couple games in the 30s. 33 and a half over under. We got a tight spread. We got the Jets defense here. We got Stroud. He's been humming, but we've been down some wide receivers. Tank Dell and IR. Noah Brown's dealing with a knee. Probably going to play. Probably, but we got to pay attention to that. With the Jets D here, we're looking at Nico Collins to get a lot of volume. But Robert Woods could be a sneaky guy. He gets a lot of the shorter targets, and you know what? Against a tougher defense. C.J. Stroud may have to progress a little bit in his reads and might have to go a little bit shorter to the intermediate part of the field where Robert Woods is at. Maybe. Maybe. It's against the Jets. You're not trusting it. But still, if you got to roll with something, you got to roll with something. Seahawks at the Niners. 47 over under with a spread at 11. That means the points should be flowing in this game. That means Seattle should be playing catch-up in this matchup, which could allow some back end fancy points some run back points for us to look at here and then the Niners are the Niners they're going to score fancy points on a whim we're going to have to go a little chalky here I did not want to go too deep with this because the targets and touches are very concentrated on both ends and if I go too deep someone who just fast forwards through the video and just looks at the pictures might go with Bobo or something crazy like that but Jackson Smith and Jigba might be seeing some short targets, a 17.2% target share, six targets per game in his last three games. He's been getting volume. He's been getting opportunities. His ADOT's climbing a little bit. I know it's very low. I don't like that low ADOT. But again, you got Lockett stretching the field. You got DK Metcalf stretching the field. That's his role right now. I imagine it's going to change as Lockett gets older, as DK. DK is going to be DK for a bit. I'm not even going to go that far. But it's going to change over time. We're going to see that ADOT increase over the years which it should, but as of right now, he could be getting some targets in the progression funnel as the Niners know they got to lock down the deep ball. They know they got to, so the ball's got to go to Jack Smith and Jigba on some times, in some instances. That might equate to some fantasy points. Vikings at the Raiders here, 40 over under, another lower implied point total. Moderates around 45, highs around 50, 50 or more. We're in 40 or less range a lot here. So we're not really getting many good matchups here. That's what Vegas is saying. But Jacoby Myers looks like he's on the comeback trails here with Aiden O'Connell. Good to see. 12 targets in his last three games. Not the greatest. Not the greatest thing you want to see. Well, actually, it's 12 targets in the last two. 14 targets in his last three. But the volume's starting to increase. That's looking good. We're coming back from a bye week. We're playing against the Minnesota, who allows a lot of passing yards to the wide receivers and fantasy points to wide receivers. They're also trendy against the deep ball. So this is a good matchup for a wide receiver, too, with a rookie quarterback to do something for us in fantasy football. Bills at the Chiefs. We're all starting our Bills. We're all starting our Chiefs. There's no one really sneaky because we're starting everybody. But he's always going to be a sneaky starter. That's Khalil Shakir. 12.5 ADOT. Gets the deep ball. He hits in about two out of five games with about 20 to 15 fantasy points. Something you like. Not a guaranteed guy. And he's almost matchup proof in a way that he just has to bring in a deep ball or two. I know the Chiefs can be a little bit tight against the pass and allowing fantasy points to wide receivers. But he's about the deep ball. He's about bringing it in. 
He's more of a lottery ticket each week. Now we're looking at the Denver Broncos at the LA Chargers. Moderate over under at 44. It's more lower to moderate. 44 is fine. Tight spread at two and a half here. So something to look into. This game could go off the rails. Divisional matchup. Chargers are looking to push the pace a little bit. We got the Broncos here. They're looking better than what they did earlier in the season. We can say that. Quentin Johnston in his last four games. Five targets a game, 13.1% target share, 58 yards, and 9.8 ADOT. The thing about this is he's been a little bit off and on. He's had some drops. A lot of people are down on him. That allows him to be a little bit cheaper. And really, we're just following the workload here. There are not many wide receivers out there who's on a Chargers offense or an offense like the Chargers. That can push it, even though they're not really doing it right now. You're getting five targets a game. But we need the air yards to increase. We need the ADOT to increase. He is a player that should have an ADOT over 10 easy. That's what we saw out of him out of college. He's getting shorter targets, which does not equate to fantasy success here. But looking at his route tree from his last game, he was running a lot of deeper routes. That could equate to opportunities. That could allow him to be more fantasy relevant. And in this offense, he could hit on any week. Eagles at the Cowboys with a 51 and a half over under. We know this one's going to be fireworks, but Brandon Cooks, last four games, has averaged 5.8 targets per game, 14.7% target share. He's also been kind of chalky, but a lot of people have been too scared to start him because he has been a little bit off and on in the beginning of the season, but he has been hitting as of late. He also been hitting against these defenses that you pass on. So you can pass on the Eagles. They allow a lot of fantasy points to wide receivers. One of the tops in the leagues when allowing fantasy points to wide receivers. And C.D. Lamb's probably going to go off. They got to stop him. That way you're going to be looking at Brandon Cooks on the back end. Should be getting some opportunities in this matchup. Tennessee Titans at the Miami Dolphins. You're starting your Dolphins. But what are we doing with the Titans here? Tajay Spears. Because he might be getting some run back fantasy points here. Because he's getting four targets a game. The Dolphins want to push the pace. We know this. We know they want to push the pace. If they get up in this game, they might be throwing it a little bit. And you know what? They're pretty tough against the pass. So they may have to go through their progressions. Will Levis, he might have to. I don't know if he will, though. He might still want to push it downfield and go YOLO. But Tajay Spills will get snaps. He will get workload and opportunity in this matchup. And things should ramp up a little bit. Packers at the Giants, 36 and a half over under. Another low projected point total from Vegas here. Spread's kind of thick at 6.5 because we got the Giants here. They ain't been looking good. They've been falling on their face. But Jalen Hyatt, he's an air yards machine. He is a Jamison Williams type player, Will Fuller type player, Rashid Shahid type player, where he can go off on any given week. You're just not going to know when to start him because he is the king of the deep ball, a 23.6 average depth of target in his last four games. That is what we're rolling with here. If he brings in one deep ball, you got a big week. If he doesn't, you don't. And that's just how the cookie crumbles with Jalen Hyatt. Those are 14 sneaky options for week 14. Let me know that Jabroni you're starting this week in the comments below. I want to hear about it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out. I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video.